Today's video will show you that not all projects are a success. You know, it happens. I often end up with issues and projects that, although are complete, they have flaws. The good news about these failures are that I always learn from them. This project just happened to be one that I recorded, and I figured I would share it with you and show you my mistakes along the way. We don't, we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. I'm sure you could tell from the thumbnail, but this project is a wall clock for my shop. I'm making it out of walnut and maple laminated together. The reason for this is because I designed the vector file so that the CNC will cut the numbers all the way through the thickness of the maple and into the walnut, which will add a little contrast and it helps make the numbers stand out a little bit. So to begin, I need to break down some rough maple and walnut to make the panels. Each of the panels are a quarter of an inch thick, giving me an overall thickness of about a half of an inch. After resawing the boards, I let them set in the shop overnight to reacclimate, and the next day, I jointed them and then ran them through the thicknesser to take them down to a quarter of an inch. Next, I can go ahead and edge glue these together because this is what's going to get me the 12 inches wide that both of the panels are needing to be. Since the panels are only a quarter of an inch thick, I don't apply a lot of clamping pressure. Doing so will only make the panels either bow or they will pop out of the clamps altogether. The key to gluing up thin panels is to make sure that the edges are jointed and that the two boards come together perfectly. With this taken care of, it's just a matter of light clamping pressure. I did follow that up with a couple of quick clamps only because I needed to move the glue up out of the way to work on the second panel. A couple of hours later, I took the panels out of the clamps and cleaned up the edges at the table saw. This process makes it a little easier to keep everything square during the next glue up, which is the lamination. I applied a generous amount of glue and then used a silicone brush to spread the glue around. I still haven't found my ink roller and although I should probably just buy another one, I'm positive that I will run into it one day when I'm least expecting it. Now it's just a matter of throwing a lot of clamps at the lamination and wait overnight for everything to dry. The rest of the project will be completed on my CNC machine. I began by using a 30 degree V-bit that Bits and Bits company sent me to try out. I used it to cut not only the numbers, but also my logo at the top of the clock. This is where the mistakes began, and the first mistake being that I forgot to rotate the numbers on the clock design. All the numbers should essentially be vertical on the face of the clock, whereas in my Adobe Illustrator file, I simply forgot to rotate 1 through 11 after adding them using the rotate tool. And what makes it even worse is that I was following an online tutorial and the very next step talked about rotating the numbers. I guess I just overlooked it. The second mistake was the tool path for the logo. For the size of the logo on the clock, I cut it way too deep and it made the smaller portion of the logo kind of hard to read. I've since fixed this by making the logo a separate tool path and of course reducing the depth of the cut. After the V-bit was done, I switched over to using a quarter inch spiral bit to make the clock round. The tool path was set up to take this into four passes, lowering the bit an eighth of an inch at a time. I'm not sure why I used the drill press for this instead of the CNC machine, but I drilled a 5 16 inch hole for the hardware. Even though this is a shop project, I'm still going to treat it like a piece of furniture, and that starts with sanding the surface up to 150 grit, and then I added a nice chamfer to the front side just to jazz it up a little bit before finishing it. I wiped an oil wax top coat on just using a cotton cloth and I made sure to apply the finish very thin and only applied one coat to both sides. To get finish down in the numbers and in the logo, I used an acid brush. Although it has flaws, I love the look of the clock. Yeah, the six looks like a nine and the logo's kind of hard to read, but it's my clock and I dig it. The maple had a beautiful streak in it so that when I book matched the panel, it added a stunning pattern across the face. Cutting through the maple and into the walnut gave the numbers a nice contrast to help them stand out. I fixed my illustrator file as well as the logo toolpath and have made several mental notes so that hopefully I won't make the same mistake again. I hope you enjoyed this build video and learned something from my mistakes. Thanks for watching.